This is Leslie Stokes from the Northern Miner. I'm reporting here at the Vancouver Roundup 2017 at the Core Shack. And what we're going to do today is we're going to track down a couple of companies that's got some pretty good, interesting, excellent results and talk to the CEOs about the project. So come on in. We are here with Marathon Gold. They've got some pretty good looking core from the Valentine Lake and some really excellent results too if you have noticed the, the wire today. So they've got 3.43 grams per ton over 50 meters. And we've got Philip Walford, he's the president and CEO and he's going to give us a little rundown of the project and what this intercept means going forward. Yes, this is a very important intercept. It's one of many actually that we've had over the last year and we're really building up a large resource and we'll find out how big that resource is next Feb in February oh. and it's really moving our goal of having a having a potential mine at in Newfoundland at, at our site and it's, it's just been so darn exciting because we're just finding it, everything's coming together and uh, we've got a million 1.2 million ounces already in resource, most of that's as an open pit at two gram grade, excellent grade for open pit. Yeah. We've got really good metallurgy and uh, we've just got to find some more of it and we're finding it. Now, so you're saying that as well earlier that the gold is kind of focused along this structural trend that's cutting through Newfoundland and, and this area has never really been explored for, for gold deposits as much. It's been a big VMS camp as I understand. So. What's the kind of idea there between the relationship between the VMS and then this gold um, that you're seeing along these structural trends? Well, the structural trend has had gold deposits on it, very small ones. Yes. And the, the difference now, is, and it has been uh, looked at in the past, about uh, 10, 20, 10 years ago or so, 15 years ago, and then it just faded away. Oh. What they were missing was a, a large deposit. And the other problem that we have is that a lot of the area is covered by overburden. Mm. So you can't see the rock. And what's happened with us is that we've been very successful in finding gold by prospecting of crops. And now we're at the stage two where we have to start looking below the overburden and so we're, we're evolving into that but meanwhile we're drilling off some great deposits and uh, we have a lot to keep us going we've got a really aggressive drilling program on this year yeah. and uh, we're also going to be doing an economic study and so we've got to do we have a lot going on now and it's just great to be back in business on this. Well it's great to be back in business in Newfoundland I was telling you earlier I said don't tell my mother about all these great gold because next thing you know I'm going to get a phone call from her saying you got to come home now there's there's lots of work here for you to get yourself involved with but in terms of opening up a whole new camp is that what we're looking at in Newfoundland there's been a I, lot of staking going on I, I think it I think it is the, the staking has been because of our success and people freely admit that oh. and more power to them there is a we call our property literally a gold camp and it is because it's the size of one. It's 30 kilometers long and more than seven kilometers wide. Oh wow. And it's got the same structure going right through it. So this is a fairly large scale property and other properties have now been tacked on all the way along the same trend and it's just great and then they're finding gold. So I think we have a gold camp in the making. I know that the gold is, is hosted in it's like in a granite rock or something, but like you were saying, it's um, it's like a bunch of sheeted, flat-lined quartz tourmaline veins, like within this structural corridor. Is that kind of the? That well, it's in. It's off the main structure. Okay. So we have we have a large old intrusion that has been fractured, and vein solutions have come in with gold and veined it. But there's also gold in all the other rock types on the property. And the gold that's being found to the north of us now is actually in a, a sedimentary rock. So that's not unusual. Yeah. It's, it's, it's showing you that there's a lot of gold coming along those structures, coming up along those structures. And that's what makes a camp because you can have, it's not just a one-shot deal. So 
I think we have the best property, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But uh, it's all good. It's all good. So I know that um, a long structural trend from you guys is the uh, now closed duck pond um, VMS deposit that was operated by Tech. And of course, to the north, we have the famous Buckins VMS deposit too. These are much older deposits than the gold that we're seeing right now, correct? But this idea that possibly um, these structural suture zones kind of like might have got a VMS deposit entrained in that structure and then the gold was possibly remobilized? Well, well certainly uh, that could be part of it. I, I think it is. I think we're seeing uh, gold uh, that's being that's coming out of the existing deposits possibly at depth deep down deep or just in general out of the rock because this rock had to have been enriched in gold throughout to produce so many uh, gold rich VMS deposits. Right and it's exciting because I guess we'll have a lot of students from Memorial University kind of getting on this now new district and oh, doing yes. all the work. Oh, I know. Yes. Good old Derek good. Wilton will be on it no problem. Oh so, yes yeah. we, we've actually funded uh, research projects by the by different students. Oh great well that's yes. great to hear. Well, thank you so much Philip really oh, appreciate that welcome. excellent over haven't had the chance to catch up with Nighthawk and their most excellent Colomac core, you have to come down and check it out. But in the meantime, you can listen in. we got Michael Byron here. He's president and CEO of the company. Um, we're up in the Northwest Territories, um, a I guess an underexplored greenstone belt where they're uncovering a Kalgoorlie look-alike, is it? Michael, would you want to start off? Sure, sure. Uh, essentially, Colomac was a... Is a it, was mined in the 90s. A, a former company called Royal Oak had it and they had an open pit and uh, we're working that until 19, about 1997 they went bankrupt and uh, the the asset then reverted to the federal government of Canada to clean up. Mm. Um, so it sat off everyone's radar for about you know better part of 10 years. We came along in 2011 and saw the potential that Colmac has and, and by that I mean it is a mafic uh, differentiated intrusion. In particular it's a sill and when you start looking around the globe and, and for similar hosts, our key and gold hosts, you, you know, you're, you're autom automatically attracted to the Kalgoorlie example because it's, it's, it's the world's second largest Archean uh, gold camp. But more importantly, what Kalgoorlie, uh, the analog tells me is it had a long history of high grade. And Colmac was never known to have any high grade affiliated with it in terms of distinct domains. So either, you know, when I looked at it, I said, well, either Colmac is barren or no one's ever looked for it. And the cold reality is no one ever looked for it. And we began that search in 2014 uh, when we first got, uh, got uh, hooked into this, this, this model-driven exploration that we're doing at Colmac and drilled into a, a zone uh, we called 1.5, just 100 meters north of the old pit. So yeah. it was within a stone's throw so, of the old pit. Yeah. Really and we intersected 52 meters of 7.8 grams uh, with a 40 meter true width. So that is totally different Colmac style mineralization. So that's the beginning of what we like to say the rebranding of Colmac, right? It's, it's not just a large tonnage, low grade deposit. It is that, but it also has this potential to get deeper into the mineralized system by virtue of these large domains that might be amenable to underground bulk mining techniques. Right. Well, yeah, because when you think of these greenstone belt gold deposits that we see in Ontario and Quebec and elsewhere, um, they're usually like shear hosted. You know, we have like veins cutting up through granites, um, pervading out. So you said that this is a sill, like an ultramafic sill being an intrusion that follows along some sort of piece of stratigraphy. How is that? How is that prospective, or how is that better or worse than the other types of greenstone deposits that we actually uh, have? Is there no, size potential there more? Well, there's a massive size potential because the sill itself runs uh, upwards of nine kilometers long, uninterrupted. So it's a very planar, linear feature, um, up to 150 meters in, in width. And uh, the, the beauty of the sill is it's differentiated. So long story short, there's a chemical separation between the top and the bottom of the sill. Mm. It's more brittle at the top, more favorable for for gold formation of gold 
veins because there's a brittleness to that that top component. So really, that's what it, it 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 that's the opportunity that we're talking about. You've got a competency contrast between the top of the sill and the surrounding rock. The top of the sill is more favorable for the propagation of quartz veins that are carrying the gold. So it's very similar in a sense of what you're looking at in the other classic camps in that you have that competency contrast theme at play there as well. It's just a different rock type. Sometimes it's a iron formation, sometimes it's a sheared contact between volcanics and seds. You know, but uh, this just happens to be a competent sill. I know you were showing me a, a plan map earlier and you were like putting it against um, the Kalgoorlie camp in terms of the structural setting and how this sill kind of sits in. In terms of blue sky potential, it strikes me that you have a lot of room to kind of move and explore that sill to see where else gold might lie. Is that kind of accurate? That's exactly what we're undertaking in this property. And, and um, as I said earlier, 2017 will be our biggest program ever. How many meters is that? We're going to be doing it close to 25,000 meters. It'll be 22 to 25,000 meters and we'll be testing more areas that look like zone 1.5 did before we discovered the high grade domain that sits in that zone. And uh, so we're pretty excited about that as well as we're going to test some of the stratigraphy east and south of, of Colmac because we think there's opportunities for these these sills to repeat in the local stratigraphy and, and oh. uh, that's something that we're pretty pretty interested in pursuing. So I guess the theme I want to tell people is just because there was a mine there doesn't mean it was explored because we've already demonstrated that. Yeah. But more importantly, if your primary host wasn't explored, then it's not a stretch to say the, the, the stratigraphy immediately around the mine wasn't either. And that's, that's part of what we're doing this summer. Yeah, and it's interesting too, I guess, for other explorers in Greenstone Belts is to kind of keep an eye out for those sills. They make great hosts. When I was working in a project in WA, we had a Gabro sill that just like sucked up all the gold. So it's kind of interesting to see, um, like get the inspiration out there for other explorers and, and Belts. Exactly. New ideas, new exactly. traps. New ideas, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're keen to be involved in this project and have the support that we do. Yeah. And we're looking forward to 217. Cool, well thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, and thanks for joining us as well and hope you're having a great Roundup 2017.